What's up guys, welcome back to Michael RV Games. It's been a while since our last tutorial, We've got a great little one for you today. We're going to look at making a low poly machete weapon. So let's just take a look at the, uh, the finished product here that we're going to make. Sort of a, a sci-fi um, pirate machete, quite clean cut, but with a, this unique curved blade. Made of four parts, blade, uh, guard, grip, and a little pommel on the bottom. So let's see if we can't recreate this. Uh, we'll learn some nice techniques along the way. We're going to start first of all just with a box. And uh, just a small tiny box like so. And I will give this, let me see, do you know what I actually have? I've got uh, all the steps over here. So I'm just going to duplicate this little box that I started with just to uh, get these dimensions kind of closer to what we have. So let me just uh, change my height and size. Make it a little bit taller. Give it two height segments. Uh, and is that a length segment? No, just the one. There we go. So a little box. Now my sizes aren't necessarily scale right here. Um, one length, two width, two height. 5, 37 by 50 and what we'll do is we'll convert this to an edible poly right click convert to edible poly and I'm just going to adjust some of these lines to help get this uh, initial shape in fact you know what I'll do I'll just bring this little guy over to the here's one I made earlier just so I can remember what I actually did to create this thing it was only this afternoon but I have the worst memory in the world so let's go okay so we're going to just take uh, this top poly here we're going to move it up a little and we're going to take this little edge here and we'll just move that uh, up and out like so and then we will take the top two pieces here and we'll go to extrude we we'll click on our little settings button here i'll go to extrude those up the way uh, let me see we'll go by group or should go by local normal we'll go by local normal uh, and that'll mean that, that back edge stays straight 10 centimeters is fine we will leave that as is and we will just go to our edge mode here we just want to pull this one up a little kind of get it even in height and in order to get that perfectly straight we do have a great little tool if we go to vertex mode we'll select all of these vertexes here on the top and we scroll down on my modifier panel this little X, Y, Z, this will set the X values, the Y or the Z, the same for every vertex. We want to set them on the same height, the Z value, if we click Z, you won't see much difference, but it will actually align those perfectly flat. Uh, what we want to do next is just uh, taper in that little piece of the blade. So I will go all the way back up, go to my polygon mode, shortcut key 4 on your keyboard. I will get my scale tool. And I'm just going to scale in that little face there. Not too much, but just a little. There we go, looking nice. Which brings us over to here. And I'm just going to, again, select these top two faces. And I'm going to extrude these out uh, about three times with a uh, say about that amount hit the little plus icon just to duplicate it then when I'm ready hit the tick let me see how's that for height not too bad pretty close on uh, and then I'm going to just extrude that one more time not quite as high and I'll just select my rotate tool and just being careful to set the correct axis I'm just going to rotate that a little like so and move it backwards just to start to see 
uh, the beginning of a little curve there. And I'll just repeat that process a couple of times, extrude again, maybe a little bit longer until I get this uh, curve shape. So I've given it one, two, three little extrusions here. Uh, let me get that a little bit higher and we'll rotate it a little bit. It might not be perfect right now, but as long as I can get the general uh, the general shape and go back and fine tune shortly after, I will extrude one more time. Maybe a little bit more. And rotate that round. That final one I want it to be basically vertical. So there we go. You might notice that my angle is snapping uh, down at the bottom here. You can see it's multiples of five degrees. And to get that, we just have our angle snaps activated here at the top, as you can see. So that's uh, vertical. Let's just uh, move this whole thing over to our little production line here. So we're about here on the model. And I just want to fine tune this just a little bit. I think I will maybe maybe just scale these up ever so slightly. The last ones we had, select you, select you, and scale, just scale up, make that the tiniest wee bit longer. Just give us more of a sharp tip there. Move you up a little bit. And I will just even out some of these verts. So let me just straighten out that corner a little bit, just even these out. And look what I'm doing. I'm selecting with a selection box here to select this vertex so that it also selects the one on the back. If I just if I just click it, it doesn't select the one on the back. I want to select both of them. I want to maintain symmetry. So I select both. And I'm just going to even out some of these curves a little bit. Uh, grab maybe these four. Remember I'm selecting, double clicking. There we go. And I will just take this one, or this two rather, remember we're selecting both. Bring them down here a little. And even out that curve. And it's just a bit eyeballing it, fine tuning it, till we get a nice curve. You want that to be nice and smooth, you don't want that to be kind of kinked out a wee bit like that or in too far like that. We want to just eyeball it and find a nice balance that makes it look like a nice smooth curve between these uh, these different edges here. Okay what next? I think I put a little bit of a, a spine on the back, moved it in, didn't like that and put it back where it was. Um, so next thing I want to do, I'm going to ignore that little spine because it wasn't on the final design, I'm going to leave this kind of straight back. Uh, the next thing we really did was add a turbo smooth just to see what kind of result we would get. Uh, you can see we've got quite low poly here. We add a turbo smooth, come to your modifier list, turbo smooth. There we go, it's softening that out, rounding those curves a little bit. But it is destroying some of our geometry here. So we need to go back and fix this. We're going to go back to your editable poly, and we're going to use a little feature called crease. If I go into edge mode, what I can do is select the edges that I want to maintain uh, their sharp corners and I can crease them. So if you look here, for example, on the bottom, you can see we've got that bit of curve there. I'm going back to my editable poly mode and an edge mode. And if I just control click on all these bottom edges, on my modifier panel down here, uh, we have these edge properties and crease and if I set crease all the way up to 1 there's a value between 0 and 1 when I do that, if I come back to my turbo smooth you'll see what's happening there, it's maintaining that edge so we want to do the same for other parts of the model just to maintain those edges so where do I want to maintain edge I will maintain my edge uh, Actually, do you know what I want to do before I go any further? Before I even do that, um, I will just crease these while I'm here. But I still have this uh, wide gap where my blade should be. I want that to be a nice sharp, uh, sharp blade. So I'm going to, in fact, just go to my vertex mode. 
uh, I can either click here or what you just saw me do was right click in the model and I can choose polygon, edge, vertex, etc. from here. Uh, I'll select the two I want, just come down to target weld, if I hit my little settings button here, if I increase the threshold, it will snap those two together halfway between the distances, so right in the middle. That's perfect. I'll just hit a little plus, select the next two, hit the plus, next two, hit the plus. Uh, I actually want, I want these two down here at the bottom as well, plus. And the little plus sign just uh, accepts that weld and allows me to move on to the next set of polys just without closing the menu and opening it again. I want to go all the way up to the top, uh, just plus 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 every time and just hit uh, the tick when I'm done. Uh, and there we go, now get that sharp edge. And you'll see there we've got this back of it, uh, nice and flat, but it comes in a fine point at the top. Okay, so now we've done that, let's have a wee look again at our turbo smooth. And you'll see again, yeah, it's softening that edge on us a little bit. So we can put a crease in a few more places here just to sharpen up those lines. So back to your edible poly mode, edge mode. Now we've only a single line here, it's actually easier to select. I'm just going to control click all the way up. It's kind of hard to see, unfortunately, but we've got that whole edge selected. Hopefully, you can see there. We will again just crease all the way up to one. That will keep that sharp. Just preview that. Oh, I think I missed one there. Yes, I did indeed. Give that a crease value of one. Turbo smooth, and that's holding that edge a lot sharper. A little bit of funniness going on down here. We'll fix that later on. And let's just also crease this back end here. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll crease you. Uh, let me see, can I double click here, double click here. That should take us all the way down the bottom. Yes, that's perfect. We just want that back spine as well, either side of that. We will crease those. And what this does is it allows us to maintain those sharp back edges but give us a bit more smoothness going through uh, the likes of this curve here. Now it does give us a bit of extra geometry. We're maybe going a long way around this. We could have just manually added those curves in ourselves, maybe saved ourselves a bit of work rather than do the turbo smooth. But I find that crease feature set is really, really useful, so it's good to know, good to show you. Uh, let me see, what else do we want to do? If we look at our final model here, you'll see we just have one, two, three sections in width, including the one for the blade itself. So I'm going to just tidy up some of this geometry uh, with that turbo smooth on there. I'm now going to just, now that I'm happy with it, now that I've got the crease as I like it, the trouble with the turbo smooth is I can't edit the geometry itself. So I'm going to just right click, convert to edible poly. Now this is a bit of a destructive edit, it means I can't go back. There are other ways that aren't destructive, but just the quick nasty method will do this. I'm just going to tidy up a couple of little bits here. I'm not a fan of that little sharp poly there. I'm just going to move that up. Uh, what else do we have? Got a little one down here. I'm just going to even that out a little. Like so. Doesn't make a whole world of difference, but uh, just like to be thorough with that. And let me see, I am going to now go to my edge mode. I'm going to double click this whole edge here because it's kind of extra. I don't really need it. And I'm going to hit control and backspace on my keyboard. Control backspace will delete that edge loop. And any vertexes will be deleted along with it and it will merge those polys into one single loop. Uh, what I do want to do here is with my edge select, I'm just going to double click on that back edge uh, and hold Alt to deselect these two here. Uh, let me just check, I've got everything I want. I don't want this run all the way around, so I'm going to Alt and drag 
And what that will do is deselect this left and bottom edge, so I'm no longer selecting this middle line here. Uh, I'm just wanting this back of the spine. And all I want to do is just add a wee tiny bit of curve to that, so I'm just going to move it out just ever so slightly, just the tiniest little amount. And then here, uh, here at the top, I'll just grab a couple of those edges, just move them down slightly. Now I did pull this one out, I shouldn't have pulled that one out, so I'm just going to eyeball it. You see there it's just sticking out ever slightly. I'm going to eyeball it and move it back into position. There we are, no one will ever know, we're all good. Perfect. Just to add a little bit of curve onto that, uh, that back. We've got that geometry, we might as well use it. I think, am I right, we're nearly there with one or two little things to do. We could, if we're being picky, we could clean up a couple of these lines. We could get rid of some of that excess geometry that we don't really need. Uh, double click to select those edge loops the whole way around. Uh, control backspace. Let me just clean up our geometry a little bit. Uh, same. We could do the same here with a slight curve. Do I want to delete some of these? Uh, I will delete this one. It's not really doing me any favours. Double click. Uh, backspace. But the rest are okay. They're kind of controlling my... They're kind of controlling my curve here at the front. Okay, one last thing I want to do with the blade. If I just hit F4 on my keyboard, we can toggle off that wireframe. You'll see it all looks pretty smooth all the way around. I want to get a little bit more definition in that blade. You can see here on the ones in the background, we've got that kind of sharp line. And how I do that is with a process called smoothing groups. Now, we've used Turbo Smooth, which is smoothing, but smoothing groups are something separate altogether. So we want to go to your polygon mode. And if I just select a random polygon here and scroll all the way down my modifier, we get this little set here called smoothing groups. Now to show you what smoothing groups are doing, if I just select everything and I hit clear all, my model now looks, uh, it's got those separate kind of facets to it. And we can see some uh, individual polygons there. We don't really want that. If I come down here at the bottom, you can see a bit better that individual polygon of the surface. We don't want that. So I'm going to control Z to put those smoothing groups back on. But the smoothing groups I have aren't quite perfect. So I want to select maybe this, 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 all the way up to the top edge. I'm going to hit clear. Currently they're on smoothing group 3, but that's the same as every other part of the model uh, along this side. So I'm going to hit clear all. I'm going to just give this a random uh, one here, number 7 maybe. And if I select that off, press F4, you can see now we've got that sharp corner, that sharp edge. Because here we have smoothing group 7, here we have smoothing group 3. With these two smoothing groups meet, we get a hard edge. So 3 and 7, 3 and 7, 3 and 7. Smooth and continuous all down here where they're all 7. Smooth here where they're all 3. But where they meet, we get that difference. We're going to do the same on the other side here. Now the important thing to remember is that we cannot uh, give this one the same smoothing group of 7. Let me see where do I want to go. Do I want that one? Yes, I do. We can't give this a seven. Let me see if I hit clear all and hit seven. We get this weird black edge in the front, and that's because here and here are both seven. It's trying to smooth them out. The angle's too sharp, and we're getting that weird uh, graphic effect. So undo that. We don't want seven, but we'll stick on a different number. It could be any random number at all here. It really doesn't matter. I'll just chuck a random one on there. That'll do. And now we have our nice blade. I think I'm happy enough with that. Let's press F4. We've got the sharpness. We've got our crease on there, however we want it. You might need to, on your model, just give different smoothing groups here to uh, you know, the back portion and down the spine as well. For example, uh, smoothing group 3 on the side here. If these were also set to 3, uh, they would kind of blend in and they would add kind of softness to them, you wouldn't see that nice sharp edge. So make sure that these are set to uh, a different smoothing group to the polygons either side, just to keep that sharpness. 
Okay, I think I'm happy enough with that. That's a nice little blade there. Let's move on now and we will make our handguard. And do you know what that is? No, I'll just leave that as it is. We've got to change the color, but it's fine. We'll start with the handguard here. How we start the handguard is we make a little plane. So we'll come back to our standard primitives. We're going to go to plane and we're going to just drag out a little plane underneath here. Now, what I will do here, just to make sure these are both even, uh, my y value here is minus 89. I'm just going to set this straight to minus 100. Nice solid number. And a little plane here, I'll also set that to minus 100. That way we know that the handguard is going to be right in the middle of that blade. Now the color is coming up as white. I don't like that. Uh, so we've got my modify panel, plane 10. Here we've got the color box. I will give this, uh, we'll use exactly the same as over here, but we'll go with this nice blue color. I'm going to set this plane to be, uh, do I want 4x4? Four four? I'll just press F4 again, toggle on this. Do I want 4x4? Four four? No, I don't. I'm going to go length segments 2. That's fine. Maybe just increase the length a little bit, uh, the width a little bit. There we go. Uh, that will do lovely. I'm going to right click, convert to edible poly. And now with this, what we want to do is go to your edge mode. Actually, let's just go, yeah, we'll go edge mode. We need to stick on edge mode. Uh, we're going to, first of all, I'm just going to lift this up a little bit. Let's give a little bit of flare at the back, like we can see here on the final. And what we're going to do is take these edges. Now it's important we're in edge mode for this to work. And we're going to hold the shift key on our keyboard and then move this down. And what this actually does is it creates a uh, new set of polys. So this would be what we call edge extrusion modeling, sort of an older form of modeling. We don't really use much uh, anymore, but is still quite useful in limited circumstances such as this. Useful for making, say, armor pieces, stuff like that. Uh, now you'll notice it is paper thin at the minute, but that's okay. We're going to work on that later. Uh, I'm just eyeballing this out. We can fine tune it later on to create that shape. I'll bring one horizontally over and then the last one just sort of down like that. Uh, happy enough with that. I will just now go into my vertex mode and maybe even these out a little bit. Maybe add a bit more curve to it. They were a bit flat there. Just soften this a little. It's all a bit soft on those curves, just looking at the vertexes and seeing where we can just even things out a little bit. Now again, we're going to add a turbo smooth to this. It will uh, actually, are we going to add a turbo smooth? Let me just double check back here. Do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, we can. We can add a turbo smooth. So let's come out of that mode there. Let's go to our modifier panel. Let's add our turbo smooth. And you'll notice in turbo smooth that we have one iteration. We used one iteration on the blade as well. If we go two or three, you can see what's happening. It's just subdividing it further, making a smoother curve. We're going to leave that at one. Uh, that is fine. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm going to now right click, convert to edible poly, and let me see, I want to add a little bit of curvature to this, so the turbo smooth is great for giving us this smoother curve this way, but it gives us these extra lines on the top, I'm going to double click here, hold control, double click here, and that way I can select all of those. I'm going to hit control and backspace on my keyboard, and that will get rid of those lines, there we go. And now just to add a little bit of curve, I'm going to select this middle line. I'm going to go to my scale tool. And I'm just going to scale that, first of all, out the way. Just very slightly. And uh, do I want, yeah, I will, just for the, for the fun of it. I'll just scale it up the way slightly as well. Now we're talking just the tiniest little amount here. Just to add a slight little curve. Okay, there we are. Uh, what do I want to do now? 
going to add a little bit of fine trim detail you can see here whoops if we go to my final model we can see that we have uh, this little bit of extrusion going on here so how do we get that let us let us first of all let's first of all give a bit of thickness here to this it's still only paper thin so i'm going to go top level i'm going to add a modifier here i'm going to add a shell modifier And you can see what the shell modifier does there right away. It just adds a little bit of thickness it takes from being a thin layer of polygons and a solid shape. And now, as I said at the start, my scale isn't correct here. This is not correct at all. I'm just going to eyeball this up until it looks about right. That's uh, not too bad there. Maybe a little bit thinner because I will actually thicken this up later on so yeah just about there and the mine says two centimeters your numbers may vary don't pay too much attention to the numbers themselves just eyeball it and see that you've got these kind of rough proportions that looks okay uh, so what do I want to do now uh, now that I've added that shell uh, previously with the bl with the blade what we did was we right click and converted it to an edible poly which meant we lost this modifier stack let's do it the right way let's show how it should be done uh, instead of right click convert edible poly this time we're going to go to my modifier list and add an edit poly modifier that way we get all the same controls but we still have our stack remaining we still have the shell and the original edible poly that's the correct way to do it that would be a non-destructive edit so let's now let's add a little bit more geometry in here so we can get that nice little extrusion that we have down here you can see we've got this little bit of uh, thickness going on a bit of trim around the edge so i'm going to select this up at the top here i have my modeling ribbon now yours might display like so you might not see it all but we see modeling freeform at the center up the top here that's what we're looking for this little white arrow will show full ribbon. And now what I want to do is, in the model on top of that ribbon, I've got a great little tool here called Swift Loop. If I click on Swift Loop, it will turn blue. That means Swift Loop is active. If I come to my model and I hover over it, you can see that it now wants to add uh, an edge loop into my geometry. Now where I want to add it is just one along here. Uh, just a little thin one. Just go eyeball it. And then I'm going to try to eyeball it and do the same on the other side. Not very precise, but no one will ever know, so it's all good. There we are. Add a little bit of geometry either side there. And that's running all the way around. Let me see. What do I want to do now? Uh, we need to deactivate Swift Loop. So I want to take all of these little pieces here and extrude them now i could control click that will take forever so instead what i will do is i will click one i will hold shift now i'm just thinking on newer versions of max this might be a different command uh, in 2020 if i hold shift you can see it highlights that ring i believe in newer versions you might need to hit control and double click on the adjacent poly so here in my version 2020 or older Hold shift, you'll see it highlights the adjacent band. Click once and we select all the way around. But if you're using a newer version of Max, you may need to hold control and double left click instead. I'm going to do that, the same thing on the side. I'm going to control click and then hold shift over the adjacent polygon to get the one I want. So there is those two bands all the way around selected. I also want to select here and here. Uh, should I select the bottoms? I will, I'll just select here and here. We'll keep it consistent the whole way around. I want here and here. And I want this bottom side. Now what I don't want is these little connectors here. These are not necessary. So I'm actually going to hold Alt, just deselect that. Alt, these like that, and you see that gives me uh, a top surface and a bottom surface, but they're both kept separate. Effectively, what I have is two two rings running around each side of my model that never touch. There we go. So I've got that. 
All I'm going to do now is go to my extrusion tool, I hit the little black settings box, and I will slide this up a little. I will set my mode here to local normal. That means it will extrude straight out from the face, no matter what direction it's facing. I just make that nice and slight, just a very tiny little extrusion there, and hit the tick. There we go. Uh, so that's looking nice, but it does leave us with a little bit of extra geometry that we don't need, uh, namely these two little rings here. So I'll go back to my edge mode, shortcut key 2 on your keyboard, double click, that will select the whole ring around, hold control, and double click this one as well. Now we have them both. Good old fashioned control and backspace, that will get rid of that extra geometry. There we go, we've got a nice little pommel there now, not a pommel, uh, a handguard, sorry. Uh, one thing we may want to do is just looking at the bottom here, we do have uh, the blade sticking through. So I am going to give myself a little bit of extra depth here, I'm going to just select that one. Yours may look slightly different depending on the positioning. And I'm going to just select these bottom couple of polys here. I'm going to go to inset and inset them ever so slightly. Just something like that. And allow that. Hit the tick to accept. And then I'm going to extrude and just give myself enough of an extrusion just to cover uh, the bottom of that blade if it happens to be sticking out. That's all good. I'm going to hit OK. We can see we've got a little bit of a curve there. So what I'm actually going to do is go to my align. I wonder will it work with polygons? It might not. Yes, it does in fact. Just the, the Z value there. And that will align those nice and flat for you. So there we are. Blade create it hand grip create it. Uh, next thing we want to do is create the grip here. Now the grip's a little bit complicated. Let's just go back to top level. We'll go back to our create panel and we'll create a little box. Now you can see how we initialize this box is a tall thin box with let me just change the color here. Uh, get a nice purple will do nice. I want four height segments, I want two length segments and I want two width segments like so, that size, oh we placed it out there, that's a lot smaller than we actually need uh, let me just sort of manually position this now uh, what we can do is we can remember this was at y of minus 100, we'll set this to also a y of minus 100 And uh, we'll just sort of eyeball in the position. We'll put it down the bottom here. Since our pivot point's on the bottom, we'll position it on the bottom. We'll go to our modify. And now we'll adjust that height up as tall as we need it. There we go. And we'll adjust the width and the length. Just to give it something a bit more handle shaped. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Happy with that. Actually, maybe just a little, a little deeper that way. That will do. Going to move it back here. Whoops. And now, very quickly, how do we make this? I'm going to right-click, convert to edible poly. I'm going to just grab a little swift loop here, and I'm just going to put one at the top and one at the bottom. Deactivate swift loop. This will just mean that when we turbo smooth this later, um, these bottom edges will kind of fit better into the, the handguard. I'm going to get my polygon mode now. I'm going to select these four faces and I'm just going to inset them ever so slightly. Uh, one centimeter there is my value. I'm just going to pull it up ever so slightly more. Just eyeball it, the exact value doesn't matter. Uh, but then I'm going to do the same thing down here. 
If I hit insert the little sentence button, it will save the same values. So just hit tick. Just repeat that process all the way down. We're trying to create these little uh, finger holes so that the grip will kind of be ergonomically designed for someone to hold. So we're just repeating that same process all the way down. Uh, what I will do is go to my edge mode, number two on your keyboard, just select these edges, hold control, select these ones, whoops, wrong one, hold alt to deselect, control to add your selection. I'm just going to grab these little guys all the way down, the three knuckles in the middle, just pull them out a little bit just to give a little bit of uh, a little bit of definition there. Next thing I'm going to do, go to my vertex mode and uh, the back here, just so it's not so straight, just going to pull this out ever so slightly and a very slight curve like so. So that is our basic shape and now I will Go to my top level, I will go to my modifier list and I'll add a turbo smooth. And there we're starting to see that shape forming a bit better already. Now, to recreate this shape that we have over here, you can see we have the inset knuckles, or, or not the knuckles, but the inside of the fingertips. We also have this little inset on the back. We are going to create that by once again, we won't do the destructive convert editable poly. We will instead go here, edit poly. And now with that edit poly modifier on top, and go back to our polygon selections. I'm just going to make a little drag selection here of all of these. And I'm going to extrude them in the way, just ever so slightly. Make sure that is set to local normal. And you see what's happening, we're extruding it in. Uh, we'll hit OK. Uh, let me see, how do I want to do this? I'm actually, while I've got that selected, I'm going to hold Control and just select uh, the rest of them. If I keep Control held down, I can do multiples at once. And that way they will all extrude and it will maintain that. Uh, that selection for me. So I'm going to, when I've got those four selected, uh, that looks good. Hit the tick now. And what I want to do is just scale these down a little so that we can see those inside edges. Now, if I just grab my scale tool and scale them down, uh, it actually works okay. That's actually That's actually pretty good, you know. I was worried it might not scale them correctly, but that's okay. And now I will just scale these in a little bit as well. There we go. So we've got those nice rounded edges and we're seeing everything nicely. Let's go to our top level, see how that looks. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now we could, if we're being pernickety, go back round here and we can hold, uh, again, hold shift to select around that edge loop. On newer versions, it might be control double click, I believe. And we'll just give that a different smoothing grip. There's no smoothing grip on there because we just uh, extruded it out. When you extrude, there's no smoothing grip. Uh, the ones adjacent to it are smoothing grip one, so we can't use that. Let's select these, just give it a random one, smoothing grip 20. Do the same here. In my case, I'm holding shift to select that whole ring loop there. Uh, we'll go 20 again, why not, be consistent. We'll shift here. There we are, that will give us some nicer smoothing. And it just gets rid of that faceted look there. Uh, we want to do a similar kind of approach on the back. Uh, what we're going to do is... If we look at the shape we have here, we've left a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom. We will, uh, we're in a polygon mode. 
I'm just going to drag a little selection here. Just to select all those middle ones. Just look on the back, make sure it's correct. I haven't over selected anything. If you accidentally over select, just hit the Alt key and remove whatever parts you don't need. There we go, that is fine. I am going to find my extrude again. Extrude. Uh, inwards just a little, maybe go a little bit more this time. There we go. Uh, again, we're going to use our scale tool and just scale it down vertically ever so slightly, just so we can see that edge a bit softer. And we will, yeah, maybe just scale in horizontally here. And if you're new to these tutorials, if you're new to Max, just pay attention to your gizmo. We can move in one axis, we can move in two, or we can move in all three. So in this case, I just want to do one at a time. Make sure we just have one line. Highlight it. Uh, okay, I'm happy enough with that. Again, we could go around this edge that we've just extruded. Select one poly, hold shift and click on the adjacent, and just apply a smoothing group to that, just to get rid of any faceting. Let's see, top level, how does that look? You can press F4. That's looking pretty darn good. Uh, last thing we want to do is just add a little pommel here on the bottom. You can see what we have is just this little end cap, kind of like a little screw or a little jewel or something. We're going to make this very, very simply. Uh, I'm going to start with a box. Go to drag it out here. Press F4 to show everything again. I'm going to make this uh, 4 by 4x4 four four. and I'll just go say whatever numbers you choose just make it the same in all, in all uh, directions. So we have a cube that's 4x4x4 four by four by four. and I want to now just move that down underneath. So that'll be a, a, a y value of minus 100 like we had before. Uh, we'll move down here and what we're going to do now is we're going to go modify and we're going to get a great little modifier called Spherify and that will turn it into a ball. Now this is sometimes better than using a sphere. If I just draw a sphere here you'll see why. Draw a sphere beside it. I don't know where that's drawn at. Oh hello. There we are reason why it's better, it gives us a different topology. If I just move them beside each other, you will see exactly what I mean. So the square here has all square polygons, or sorry, the box that we spherified has all square polygons, whereas if we initially, if we initiate just a sphere, uh, we've got triangles here, and we're a bit less versatility than what we can do. Now, we're not actually going to do much with this, but all the same, you've got two methods of creating a sphere there, two different topologies. Uh, for this, uh, I quite like the little spherified box. Uh, what I'm going to do now with that, like so, click on it. We will... Yeah, do you know what? At this point, we'll just right-click, convert to out of the poly. We'll not worry about destroying the layer stack here, it doesn't really matter. Um, one wee thing now, if we do spherify this, now a box has smoothing groups for each side, so you'll see that this doesn't look like a sphere. We still have those weird shines coming on the corners. That is to do with our good old friend smoothing groups. If I go to my polygon mode here, select absolutely everything. You will see that it has multiple smoothing groups applied. Uh, six in fact. We're going to clear all. Let me zoom in and you'll see that happening in real time. We're going to hit clear all. And it leaves it all faceted, all diamond like. And we're just going to apply one single smoothing group to the whole thing. And suddenly we get a nice smooth surface. There we go. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is I am just going to select the entire top half here. And we'll hit delete. Oops, I think I selected too much on that backside. Undo. Yep, I did. That's why you just got to be careful here. 
notice we've got a nice flat angle I'll look around, there we go, delete uh, and what I want to do now is go to my edge mode, shortcut key 2 on the keyboard select this entire top ring and I will just hold shift on my keyboard and drag that up so this is kind of like doing an extrusion from your edges but we don't actually need to hit the extrude uh, button here the extrude button that we have here handier for doing polygons but we're just moving edges or duplicating edges we can just hold shift on the keyboard and that'll do it uh, okay there we go we've got that I'm going to go to polygon mode now shortcut key of 4 on my keyboard but just to show you if you've no sound on we're going to polygon mode uh, select that hold shift and select that whole ring just going to extrude that out just a little uh, default mode is not correct so we're going to change that to local normal that's far too big we'll just slide that down just a little bit bigger that'll do lovely hit the tick uh, and there we go now we do have this little ring of polygons here I'm just going to hold shift select all of those delete them and now if I come to top level I will just manually position and scale this as needs be move you down just a little bit yeah that is that's pretty perfect there so there we go I have my blade my guard my grip and my little pommel underneath I'll just move it over, over to the side here so you can see what we have uh, this is quite a short blade now I could very easily just go back to my blade and start fine tuning grab some of these verts uh, and just lengthen it like so as I said at the start I didn't really scale this I'm just eyeballing it so then you could do the same you could just once you get the basic uh, building blocks into place you can play with this and adjust it as necessary uh, we can go back we can adjust to uh, different bits and pieces and proportions here now the blade would be the easiest to change uh, in terms of length I quite like that a little bit longer blade yeah happy enough with that go to go top level uh, last thing we could do here we'll just we could rename these um, machete underscore blade machete underscore handguard and it's always good to do these naming conventions when we bring in Unreal or a game engine or whatever so we know that what these random boxes all have become and uh, that would be machete underscore pommel there we go so I think I'll leave it there for that video how are we for time we are 48 minutes wow that was a long one uh, we'll leave that there Part two of the video, we're going to unwrap this guy uh, so that we can then texture him in Substance Painter. So that is a nice low poly asset, ready to go in game. We can work with that. Uh, let me see. Actually, one last wee thing just before I go. I've just noticed here. Edit poly. If we come back to our very low editable poly, and before I do that, I'm just going to save file. Uh, if I come back to my very very bottom stack I just want to right click hide unselected I just want to crease these top edges remember our little crease function from before and it will just uh, stop them from stop those top edges from rounding off see how they're rounding off there don't want that we can ignore this little message Just double click all the way around here. So sort of crease all the way up. That way when we apply turbo smooth. Yeah, that stays nice and solid at the top there. Do the same at the bottom. The double click won't give us the whole ring, but it will uh, reduce our number of clicks we need to make just set that crease all the way up let's come all the way back up to our top level there we are much better, we've sharpened out those uh, little bottom edges there 
I meant to do that earlier, just totally slipped my mind. Uh, we can now right click and unhide all. And there we are. We are a little bit off kilter on our garden. I'm looking at that. Again, it's an easy fix. I can just come back here. I will hide unselected and just take a few of these lines. Actually, I'll just take the polys themselves. One, two, one, two, and just widen you ever so slightly. I will use my scale tool. Uh, no, I can't do that, in fact. Uh, we'll go to the edges. I select the edges. 3DS Max can be funny sometimes with how... Uh, we're still not working. Okay, do you know what? Ideally, that scale should move into the center here, so we can scale them out a little bit. If I use my vertexes, it will work. I don't want to manually select them, but now I've got these edges selected. Cool little trick. If I hold control and then click in vertex mode, it will have all the verts selected that were connected to those lines. Same for the polys. If we hold control and click, it will select all the polys that those are connected to. Now, we didn't want that. So let's go back to our verts here. Now we just scale this out a little bit just so our handle isn't uh, sticking out. Top level and unhide all. There we are, that's better. Okay, yeah, we're definitely going to leave it there that time. That's nearly an hour. Let's call it quits there. Uh, and we'll see you in part two for the unwrap, which should hopefully be a lot faster. Just save my file, and I will see you next time, guys. Thank you very much.